Welcome everyone. We're going to jump right into this painting today while we talk a little bit about how I approach my paintings. That's going to be sort of the general overall theme of this video is how I approach painting. It's not a completely uncommon practice. There are many different ways that many painters approach their paintings. But for me, the starting point is always working from bigger shapes down to the finer details. So when I started this painting, I really am not doing anything but worrying about how I cropped the image in my reference photo and mimicking that in my painting. I, I don't want to get into the nose and the eyes, the mouth locations, things like that. I am just doing the shape of shadows first, getting some of those bigger shapes like the forehead, the eye socket locations, and then slowly getting those other things like the nose and the mouth sort of figured out. I'm not gonna get every little bit of detail in there. As far as the colors I'm using, I am keeping my palette fairly straightforward. If you go over to my Patreon page, you will see the full video with the palette mixing and everything. So jump over to Patreon. I'm just getting that started. So it only has a few videos on there. It's going to have upwards of 20, 30 videos in the next couple months. So feel free to check that out. But for just a quick background on this layer. I have maybe about five, if I recall, I have about five different piles of paint. And each of those piles represent a different location that I'm working on. So from left to right, I always go dark to light. So the left side of my palette, I will have the dark shadows, which are a cooler shadow. They're definitely on the blue side. Then in the mid-tones, I start shifting the colors into the greens, and I get a little bit of yellow added once we start getting into the highlights a little bit later on on this first layer. But the key for me to you know, creating a painting that doesn't get too dull or too boring, it retains some of those brush strokes, is to always paint with paint. That is one of those things I learned from another artist that is a really great still life painter. Paint with paint. Don't try to work with the paint that's already there. Of course, there's always times when you maybe want to blend things a little bit that you don't necessarily need a ton of paint on your paintbrush, but try to always go back and reapply paint. Keep your brushes as clean as you can between different piles of paint so if you're going from the dark to the back to some light paint try to clean your brush in between I am constantly cleaning my brush in between brush strokes if I know I'm going to shift to another color or work with another color of paint and we're starting to get to the very end of this first layer where I have it where I want it I have the detail in the nose and in the mouth but I know on that second layer, that's where the real fun begins. I'm going to start throwing a bunch of color at this thing. We're going to get into some really intense blues. But before we do that, I let it dry for a few days. And here we go. The second layer is getting started with, again, just like my first layer, I'm creating these piles of paint. And the first pile is that darker, richer blue that is going to sort of go into those same shadow areas as the first layer. Then the mid-tones get a little bit more green. It's still very blue, but there's a little bit of green being added. And then I start adding a little bit more of that green to the final highlights. But I started off with like three piles of paint. And the key is to just let that evolve. And as we get further and further into this layer, I think by the end of this painting, there's gonna be about eight different piles of paint. Again, just like that first layer, I'm keeping things simple. I'm not overthinking the tones too much. I'm just trying to get that paint laid down because when you're painting wet into wet, you can shift those tones and shift those colors uh, as you need. Now regarding 
what I'm thinking about when I do this second layer, I am really starting to shift my focus over to the abstract way of thinking, which is definitely a different type of mindset, but it's something I've always loved doing. I love creating paintings that are a mix of representational and abstract, but that's what you have to decide for yourself what your paintings are gonna be. Another question that I get asked quite a bit is how do you know when it's done? How do you know when you've gone as far as you need to with each painting? And I think every artist will answer this in a different way, but for me it's just sort of a gut reaction to can I make this painting any better by applying more paint? And that's a very simple way to look at it, but I think it works for me because I know I'm going to make another painting the very next day. I'm going to be painting a lot of things over the course of my career. And if you get too hung up on these little decisions on when it's done, how much further you want to take it, especially when it's abstract, you can really hinder your progress and really kind of freeze yourself up and not allow yourself to get to the next painting and create more work because you may decide to quit sooner with one painting and you may decide to just go layer after layer for the next painting and each one could be just as successful depending on if you spent five hours versus 20 hours so you know it's a gut thing I I guess for me it just if I was to give any advice on knowing when your paintings done just don't overthink it too much. If you like what you're seeing, you like what you're looking at, it looks like it's got plenty of detail, it's got plenty of all the things you wanna see in your work, just call it a day. Don't overdo it. You may be surprised that some of your paintings will sell a lot quicker when you put the least amount of work into them, and then a painting that you spent 50 hours on will be the one that never sells. So it's really hard to say when you should stop and when you should keep going, but uh, for me, I have a few things in the back of my mind that I think about. Does this painting have some texture? Do I have enough detail in certain areas? And did I create some fun abstract elements? Is everything color-wise working together? Is the overall composition harmonizing? All these things will start happening uh, towards the end of my painting process. And if I can check all these boxes off, if just my instant look at my painting goes, yes, this is done. And especially if I've waited a day, taken a second look at it, and then I say it's done, then that's when I know that it's definitely done. For these final brush strokes though, you can see I'm putting a lot of fun texture. Sometimes I break out the palette knife, sometimes I don't, but for this one, I decided to have a little fun with the palette knife at the very end to get that last little thing that it needed. And that's about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here's some quick shots of this painting at its final state. It is just a little eight by 10, but I tell you what, this one really turned out well. I love the subtle colors of green and then using those intense blues. It is definitely a palette that I will revisit again. So please hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this and I will see you again next week.